Of course. I shall do it. Yes. Yes. I am ready. A high dragon is not a joke. So best be careful. Real careful. I may have to try to do the fight with the high dragon later. And Flemeth's looks like the same thing. So apparently that's the Anjaste um, that the cult is worshipping. Worthy. It is not my place to decide your worthiness. The gauntlet does that. If you are found worthy, you will see the urn and be allowed to take a small pinch of the ashes for yourself. If not, before you go, there is something I must ask. I see that the path that led you here was not easy. There is suffering in your past. Your suffering, and the suffering of others. You abandoned your father and mother, leaving them in the hands of Rendon Howe, knowing he would show no mercy. Do you think you failed your parents? Then you do not dwell on past mistakes, neither yours nor someone else's. It's easy for others to judge what you've done in hindsight, but it doesn't make it any better. One wonders what this Guardian's purpose is. Be wary of his traps. What's past is past. Why bring it up and open old wounds? And what of those that follow you? Alistair, Knight, and Warden. You wonder if things would have been different if you were with Duncan on the battlefield. You could have shielded him from the killing blow. You wonder, don't you, if you should have died and not him. I... yes. If Duncan had been saved and not me, everything would be better. If I just had the chance, maybe I... 
And you, why do you say the Maker speaks to you, when all know that the Maker has left? He spoke only to Andraste. Do you believe yourself her equal? I never said that. I... In Orlais, you were someone. In Lothering, you feared you would lose yourself, become a drab sister, and disappear. When your brothers and sisters of the Cloister criticized you for what you professed, you were hurt, but you also reveled in it. It made you special. You enjoyed the attention, even if it was negative. You're saying that I made it up for... for the attention? I did not. I know what I believe. And you, Morrigan, Flemeth's daughter, what? Be gone, spirit. I will not play your games. I will respect your wishes. The way is open. Good luck, and may you find what you seek. Maker's first creations were the spirits, glorious beings that populated the many spires of the Golden City, and the Chant of Light says that they revered the Maker with unquestioning devotion. The Maker, however, was dissatisfied. Although the spirits were like him in that they could manipulate the ether and create from it, they did not do so. They had no urge to create, and even when instructed to do so possessed no imagination to give their creations ingenuity or life. The Maker realized his own folly. He had created the spirits to resemble him in all but the one and most important way. They did not have a spark of the divine within them. He expelled all the spirits out of the Golden City and into the Fade, and proceeded to his next creation, life. The Maker created the world and the living beings upon it, separated from the Fade by the Veil. His new children would be unable to shape the world around them, and thus would need to struggle to survive. In return for their struggle, the Maker gave them the spark of the divine, a soul, and he watched with pleasure as his creations flourished and showed all the ingenuity that he had hoped for. The spirits grew jealous of the living and coaxed them into the Fade when they slept. The spirits wished to know more of life, hoping to find a way to regain the Maker's favor. Through the eyes of the living they experienced new concepts, love, fear, pain, and hope. The spirits reshaped the Fade to resemble the lives and concepts that they saw, each spirit desperately trying to bring the most dreamers to their own realm so they could vicariously possess a spark of the divine through them. As the spirits grew in power, however, some of them became contemptuous of the living. These were the spirits that saw the darkest parts of the dreamers. Their lands were places of torment and horror, and they knew that the living were strongly drawn to the places that mirrored those dark parts of themselves. These spirits questioned the Maker's wisdom and proclaimed the living inferior. They learned from the darkness they saw and became the first demons. Rage, hunger, sloth, desire, pride. These are the dark parts of the soul that give demons their power, the hooks they use to claw their way into the world of the living. It was demons that whispered into the minds of men, convincing them to turn from the Maker and worship false gods. They seek to possess all life as their due, forging kingdoms of nightmare and fate in the hopes of one day storming the walls of heaven itself. And the Maker despaired once again, for he had given the power of creation to his new children, and in return they had created sin. I'm going to continue, but I want to save just in case. of the soul, passion's cruel counterpart. From love she grows, till love lies slain. Of what do I speak?
That is not of what I speak. That's not what I meant to select. All right, all right. <laughs> I meant to select me to hear that again. And we're still alive. <sighs> I'd neither a guest nor a trespasser be. In this place I belong, that belongs also to me. Of what do I speak? It was my dream for the people to have a home of their own, where we would have no masters but ourselves. The enemy of my enemy is my friend, and thus we followed Andraste against the Imperium. But she was betrayed, and so were we. She wields the broken sword, and separates true kings from tyrants. Of what do I speak? Yes, I could not bear the sight of Andraste's suffering, and mercy bade me end her life. I am the penitent sinner, who shows compassion as he hopes compassion will be shown to him. I'm mad that I messed up the first one. Oh well. No man has seen it, but all men know it. Lighter than air, sharper than any sword comes from nothing, but will fell the strongest armies. Of what do I speak? Yes, hunger was the weapon used against the wicked men of the Teventer Imperium. The Maker kindled the sun's flame, scorching the land. Their crops failed, and their armies could not march. Then he opened the heavens and bade the waters flow, and washed away their filth. I am Kefer, disciple of Andraste and commander of her armies. I saw these things done and knew the Makers smiled on us. The bones of the world stretch towards the sky's embrace, veiled in white. Like a bride greeting her groom. Of what do I speak? Yes. I carried Andraste's ashes out of Tevinta into the mountains to the east, where she could gaze ever into her maker's sky. No more fitting a tomb than this could we find. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. The debt of blood must be paid in full. Of what do I speak? Yes, my husband Hesarian would have chosen a quick death for Andraste. I made him swear that she would die publicly with her war leaders. That all would know the Imperium's strength. I am justice. I am vengeance. Blood can only be repaid in blood. Smallest luck could carry it, while a strong man might not. Of what do I speak? That is not of what I speak. Oh well. Do that. Hmm. Oh, there's one more. Okay. Brona. Echoes from a shadow realm, whispers of things yet to come. Thought strange sister dwells in night, is swept away by dawning light. Of what do I speak? A dream came upon me as my daughter slumbered beneath my heart. It told of her life and of her betrayal and death. I am sorrow and regret. I am a mother weeping bitter tears for a daughter she could not save. Oh. 
My dearest child, you know that I am gone, and all your prayers and wishes will not bring me back. Pop, I know you miss me, but my death and my life no longer have a hold on you. This is how it should be. Set your eyes on the horizon. Do not look back, and do not falter. You have such a long road ahead of you, and you must be prepared. And so I leave this in your hands. I know you will do great things with it. Something is coming. Back! Now's better than later. I'll get on it. Now's better It's stronger than the actual Alistair. Now's better than later. Uh oh, I'm terrible at puzzles. Hey, you see those thingies over on the side of that huge chasm? I bet they're used for something. Maybe I should touch them or stand on them? Alistair, normal people tend to avoid strange-looking sections of floor thingies, as you say. They tend to be traps. You uh, don't really think they're traps, do you? What now? Ooh, look at that. I don't think it's solid enough to stand on, but it's a start. to get across. Yes. Speak then. Here. You need me? What now? One person across the road. Yes.
cast off the trappings of worldly life and cloak yourself in the goodness of spirit. King and slave, lord and beggar, be born anew in the Maker's sight. You have been through the trials of the gauntlet. You have walked the path of Andraste, and like her, you have been cleansed. You have proven yourself worthy, Pilgrim. Approach the sacred ashes. dreamed I would ever lay my eyes on the urn of sacred ashes. I... I, I... I have no words to express. I didn't think anyone could succeed in finding Andraste's final resting place. But here... here she is. I stand in awe. Really. next. What now? Now, <laughs> 
No one knows for certain where this amulet came from. All we have is a legend. Long before the Golden City turned black, where li there lived in the Deventer Imperium a frail old magician in the court of the Archon. He was the least among the mages of the court, the Lamplighter, whose task it was to set all the thousands of candles alight and snuff them again when the Archon retired for the evening. He was counted as useless by all of the most influential magisters, but he was only biding his time. One day, when all the magisters of the Imperium were assembled in the Great Hall of the Archon, the Lamplighter struck. He conjured a massive firestorm in the hall, trying to assassinate all who were assembled and seize power upon himself. The court was made up of the most powerful mages of the Imperium, and they worked quickly to destroy the would-be usurper, but found, to their astonishment, their magic was no match for the old mage. Every spell they cast was countered, and the mag magisters began to fall, one by one until only the Archon himself and the Lamplighter were left, locked in a battle of magic and will. The Archon saw that with each spell he cast, the Lamplighter himself seemed to wither and fade a little more. So he bombarded the mage with spell after spell, until at last nothing was left of the palace but rubble, nothing left of the court but corpses, and nothing left of the Lamplighter but a golden pendant. This the Archon kept to remind himself that treachery could come from even the most innocuous sources. I don't care about whatever's in the character's crap. The world during the First Blight was different from the world we know today. Aside from the civilized rule of the Imperium, humans as a race were largely barbarous and splintered, divided into clans and tribes and squabbling amongst ourselves for resources. At the same time, deep beneath Thetis' great mountain ranges spanned a dwarven culture as organized and advanced as ours was primitive. As the darkspawn bubbled up to the surface from their underground lairs, mankind first buckled and then fought back. The armies of Tevinter attempted to face down the multitudes of twisted creatures in the horrid rotting of the land around them, but they could not be everywhere at once. Human history remembers the first blight as a time of terrible devastation, and those stories are accurate, but in our arrogance we often forget the price paid by the dwarves in their isolated mountain kingdoms. The dwarves faced far greater hordes than humanity as the Darkspawn challenged them for control of the underground. Despite the might and technology the dwarves brought to, their, to bear, the da savage Darkspawn tore through them, first destroying the more remote Thags before swallowing up entire kingdoms. Think of it. An entire civilization lost in the space of decades, compared to the near genocide that the dwarves faced, what we humans call the first blight must have seemed a mere skirmish. Against the darkspawn, the dwarven lands have always borne the brunt of the fighting and the majority of the sacrifices. Four dwarven kingdoms finally managed to combine their might and fight back, and that cooperation saved them. But for the rest of their lands, it was too late. The darkspawn had taken the deep roads, the majestic underground passages that linked the dwarven lands through Thetis. The dwarf's darkspawn could now attack anywhere on the surface through these tunnels. Humanity simply was not prepared for such an onslaught. It was clear that the warfare we knew would not avail us. We had to find a new way to fight. Thus came our salvation. The Grey Wardens were born. Welcome back. You were gone for quite some time. Well, did you find it? Is that? Oh, there's some dust on... No, that's not dust. Oh, Maker, I am not worthy to look upon. What... what was it like, coming to the urn, I mean? Tests? Interesting. Very interesting. Perhaps my research will not seem so much like blasphemy to the Chantry now. We must organize an expedition. There is so much history here, it must be studied, and and pilgrims should be allowed to come to the Ann. But the urn belongs to all the faithful. How can you deny this to them? No, we must share it. I agree. We cannot withhold this from others. It is not our place. So everyone comes by and takes some ashes from the urn. Ooh, I hope that urn is self-replenishing. Yes, share it. Spread the word and more will come under the Chantry's power. Is this not what you want? I will spread this good news or die trying. 
I must return home. I have much to do. If you ever find yourself in Denerim, please visit me. I am not a rich man, but I have a small collection of interesting artifacts, and I do owe you a reward for coming to my rescue. I hope to see you soon, my friend. Okay, I'm heading back to camp. everyone their gifts that looks fine indeed <laughs> mm, that smell this is uneven leather isn't it I would know that anywhere <laughs> I don't know how you found it but thank you now, if only you could find me a prostitute or two, a bowl of fish chowder, and a corrupt politician, I'd really feel like I was home. <laughs> and they fit as well. Marvelous. You have excellent taste. Oh, marvelous. Fine gift. You have my thanks. What do you need? Ask away. You've seen and touched and dressed his ashes. They are the holiest thing on this earth. The remains of the Maker's Chosen. I do not know if I am worthy to look upon her. Yes, of course, but it still is something to be in awe of. <laughs> I still got it. Weren't you watching? She could barely restrain herself. Might as well rest up while I can. You ready to go? Aye. All right then. You are good to your troops, Warden.
You and your friends are formidable folk, indeed. I'm sure you... Enchantment? Enchantment! Alright, that's I'm gonna save right there. Thanks for watching.